used for, you can use them for a multitude of things, including um, t detail work. Say, say if I um, had put plastic filler, say if I had put plastic filler like around right here, you can actually take this and sand, you can sand the plastic filler with, with this tool. But the other thing we use it for heavily is get cleaning spot welds for, um, to, uh, to take up two parts apart. Say if I was gonna replace this, if I was gonna take this apart to, to weld a new piece on here, you gotta relieve the spot weld. And so what we do is we take this. See that? Oh wow. Now I take a chisel and that pops right apart. Oh wow, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, and that actually had a lot of power, no problem. I was pushing really hard. Repair, we have Trying to take the car apart, okay? Well, say we want to get at these bolts right here, uh, we, and uh, this is smashed. We'll take this, this saw right here, and we'll cut an excess, we'll cut an excess to the bolts in a smashed area. Right. What's up you guys? I'm here with Pat, Bodybuilder Autos. Everybody loves Pat. Pat loves Ingersoll. And today I, I gave Ingersoll. him two tools. And I'm going to be honest, dude, I totally wanted to keep them. And I'm kind of upset that I'm giving them to you, but I know you're going to put them in good use. And uh, there's yeah. kind of some tools that I've never seen on the market before in cordless. Okay. So what do we got? I've what never are, seen them in cordless either. What, what are they? This is a, a mini saw, uh, you know, just a reciprocating saw. Battery powered, 20 volt, and then this is a um, I call 12, it, 12 volt, not 20 volt, 12 volt. I call it finger sander. Is that what you guys call it? This one? Yeah. A mini belt sander. Okay. Uh, mini belt sander with, with the uh, adjustable angle head on it, so you can get in different areas. So now what would you use something like that for? What we use this for, and we use it, the guys use these every day in, in pneumatic not battery. When they see this, they're going to all be fighting over it. But this is used, one of the main reasons they use this here is to clean spot welds, to, to weaken a spot weld to separate it for replacing a part. So in this case, say if I was going to weld this outside panel on, if this was a quarter panel on a car, we have to break the welds right here. These are spot welds. We have to break those, and to break them, you have to weaken them. There's different methods. Uh, drill bit is one method. There's a whole lot. Of, everybody's got their own way. But what what this is nice for is in tight areas where you can't get uh, a drill or something, you will use this because it reaches. I was putting a lot of pressure on that just now and I did not slow it down. This now, if I was to take a chisel, and that'll pop loose right now. Really? Just like that? Yeah. And the thing is, you don't care about this outside panel because you're replacing it. So it doesn't hurt it to make that large of a um, mark on it. But you saw how quick that was to weaken that. A drill bit gets dull so quickly that I, that actually would have probably taken me a little longer to drill with a used bit as opposed to grinding it with this. So the guys are real fans of these for breaking welds. And I mean, also in like just tight areas, you know, you got yeah. a little burr you got to get rid of, that'll get it yeah. done. That, yeah, so then when you weld a new panel on, you have to, wherever you have to MIG, if you, you have to clean your welds up, you have to clean, uh, flatten them. This is excellent for that in tight areas where you can't get the large five inch grinder or the three inch uh, mini grinder. You could actually clean up your weld. Say if you, this was a weld in here, obviously I can't get a grinder in there, but I can get this in there. And I can clear the surface of the spot weld real easily. And what's, what this also does, if you get into an area where you can't, you, you can't have this straight, you just turn it to get in wherever you want. So, excellent tools. How often do you go through your belt? That's for belt chain. How do you change your belt on there? This one, you just push this button and, and push it in. Okay, see I see. Yeah. I haven't used this one before, so. No, it's just a little tight. I did it earlier. Yeah, you yeah. push in and pull out. Yeah. How, how often Spring do you go through your belts on something like they this? They last quite a while. Really? Um, you can get a couple of, depending on how many welds you do, but 
you can get two or three cars out of a, a belt. Okay. Yeah. So that's the what model is this thing? Uh, I don't know the model number off the top yeah. of my head, but anyway, then we have the saw. What we use this for? Uh, a lot of a lot of reasons to use this. Accessing an area. Here's a good example. Say uh, say there's a bolt right here, and we can't get a socket on it. We can we can use the saw to clear to to cut the metal and weaken it and bend it out of the way. But more more likely. We're going to use an air chisel for that. So we would use this on plastic parts to cut a hole in them to access a bolt. Uh, you know, basically, it's quick access to uh, to to release fasteners and so on. Right. That's one of the things you use it for. Another thing you could use it for is when you're putting a quarter panel on a car, you got to cut the old panel off. You would use this at the sail panel area above the, like, say, right here. You would use it to cut that. Oh, right through the metal? Right through the metal, wow. yeah. And uh, normally these are air. Yes. So what's your yeah, advantage every, of having battery? Just a just quick grab it, don't have to find an air hose. Um, a lot of times you, uh, when you're dragging an air hose around these, these high-end cars, you scratch them. So oh, not yeah. having an air hose dragging across a car by accident or you know even if you're careful, because air hoses are always full of garbage from the floor. Right. And if a guy's not paying attention, he drags that air hose, especially in a situation like this. I'm replacing this panel. I cut right here. The air hose is cut and dragging across this door that gotcha. I'm not repairing. Gotcha. So that's a good reason. So you got to be, obviously the guys are careful about that, but it has happened where a, a panel gets scratched. So, so uh, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I was just going to say the speed of it, just grabbing it off your toolbox and going. It does have a battery indicator also. Is it charged? Two, bar, two bars. So will it cut through this sheet metal? It shouldn't, should cut through it, no problem. Just That's a blade I was using earlier. It's probably not the greatest blade. I was blade, just though. looking at, uh, this blade does have some missing teeth. Yeah, I was messing around with it. So, earlier. we'll see. And that, that was uh, double metal right there. Wow. Oh yeah, you're going through both I'm sides. I'm going, going through both sides. Wow. And, and like something like that's real precise too, right? Yeah. I mean, it's easy to control because it's so it's small, heavy enough because it's Ingersoll. It's heavy enough that it doesn't shake a lot. And uh, what I like about this, as opposed to the air, the air is all or nothing. When it's on, it's going full bore. You could dial it in with an air regulator, but this this one actually controls Trigger speed. Control. Yeah. Cuts fast. Yeah, cool. And so, you got an adjustable shoe. So that's for yeah. what? So you can control your depth and use different parts of the blade, right? Yeah, right. Like on this right now. Say you don't want the blade hitting the backside of this. I, I had it in here. I shortened the depth so it's not bouncing off of this. That goes all the way around the back. That okay. goes that way two inches. Man, they really wrecked this thing up. There, I'll do it again. That cuts really fast. Cool. Good stuff, Pat. So. Metals are separated there. Would you it's recommend? Gonna chatter. Okay. Would you recommend this stuff? Absolutely. How long you been like using? It. How long you been using your 12 volt? Uh, three years now. Wow. Do you ever use the USB charger on them? Did you know they have a USB charger? Plug your yeah, phone I in? do. I do know they have it, but I haven't had to use it. Okay. Always in the shop. Right, because you're all over. But a right. guy that's for like a, on a yeah. bench stop, he could put it there and yep. hook his phone up. It's cool. Right. right. No, I don't have to, but. Cool. And yeah. on, honestly, have you had any problems with your Ingersoll? Nothing. That's Nothing? My, those are my go-to tools. Yeah. My 12 volt. Yeah. Yeah. We're, like we were discussing earlier, those are my most used is my quarter and three eighths uh, 12 volt ratchets. Cool. All right, you guys. Bodybuilders Automotive out here in Rolling Meadows. 
Rolling metal. And dude, you got a reputation, man, because I've been talking to some people who know about this place, you know? And I mean, I, I live kind of far from Rolling Meadows, but people out by me, they're like, oh yeah, bodybuilders, I know that, they do great work. Wow. Which is amazing. So. We've been around for um, 30, 32 years. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, you do boat gel coats too. Yeah. We're going to revisit that too, you guys, coming up soon. We'll go out to a job, uh, hopefully, if get, if, or if you get, get a boat in here, we'll go out and just see how you do some gel coat yeah. work. That stuff's nasty, man. It is. <laughs> yeah. This, the dust and stuff. Yeah, yeah it's not fun to breathe. Yeah. Good stuff, you guys. Hashtag TIA crew wherever you go. Bodybuildersautomotive.com is Pat's website. And don't forget to brush your teeth because it is Tuesday. And then every Tuesday you got to brush your teeth, Pat. Today's Tuesday? Yeah. Isn't today Tuesday? I thought it was Wednesday. Oh, today's Wednesday. Uh, so don't forget to change your socks today. For more exciting tool action, go to toolsinaction.com.